This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. It's time for Women's Wealth Wednesday, providing useful financial tips from Foster Financial each and every week. And we are catering to women today. And back with me is your financial specialist, Caleb Doan. Hi, Caleb. Hi. How's it going? It's going really well. Good. Well, we've been talking for the last few weeks about the proper steps that widowers, so women who have lost their spouse, unfortunately, mm -hmm. should take financially. So step number one was gathering the documents. Step number two was contacting the right people. Mm -hmm. And now Caleb's going to share with us step number three to conclude this series. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and of course, this is just a, a massive financial change in somebody's life and, and not to mention just a, a big life change too. Mm -hmm. And so of course, you know, after taking care of, of all the personal aspects that go into that, it's important to start looking at the financial aspects as well. And so you, you certainly mentioned kind of those first two buckets. And really the last one is about taking certain actions. Okay. okay. So within taking actions, I think there's probably three main things that, that come to mind. And the first one is adjusting beneficiaries mm -hmm. on any accounts. Okay. So um, a, a lot of times what people will do is they'll have primary beneficiaries listed, mm -hmm. but they won't have contingent beneficiaries mm. listed, which is an important step that, that we always like to have people take. But in most cases, you know, a husband and a wife will have each other listed as the 100% primary beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, a, a wife in this scenario might have her husband listed as, you know, the primary beneficiary on her IRA and a non-qualified account or whatever it might be. And if he passes away, now there are no beneficiaries listed on the right. account. And so that can kind of open it up to, to issues if she were to pass away mm -hmm. exactly how that money would be inherited. Right. So that's certainly something we like to take a look at. So question for you with that, with the beneficiary, how many is recommended to have on an account? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Typically, as long as there's a primary beneficiary mm -hmm. and contingent beneficiaries, you're, you're typically have kind of covered your bases covered there. It. And so mm -hmm. what most people do is they'll have their spouse as the 100% the primary beneficiary. Mm -hmm. And then if they have, you know, two kids, they list both kids as, you know, 50-50 contingent beneficiaries. Okay. And what would happen, mm -hmm. you know, where the, the contingent beneficiaries would come into play is maybe, you know, if both spouses were to pass away at the same time, mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, that's when it goes down to the contingent beneficiaries. Or if, if one spouse passes away and then the beneficiaries are never updated, mm -hmm. then, it, then it goes back down to the, the contingents after that second spouse passes. So updating our beneficiaries. And then what's the next step? The, the next step would be setting a budget. Okay, mm. so, so like we mm -hmm. talked about, it's a major financial change for somebody. And I think a lot of people maybe have a misconception that when there it goes from two people in a household down to one, that the expenses are kind of cut in half. And, mm. and a lot of times it's actually not the case. Right, doubled. <laughs> right, right, yeah, the, the, the expenses, you know, yeah. w the figure we typically use is that, you know, a widow will retain probably about 80% of her monthly expenses mm. that she had, you know, when she was, was living with, with her husband in the past. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if somebody has a mortgage, that's gonna stay exactly the right. same. If somebody has, you know, cable, streaming services, Wi-Fi, whatever it might be, that's gonna stay exactly the same with one person mm -hmm. as it was with two. And so if somebody was, you know, trying to make ends meet before, it can be even more important, you know, when somebody is widowed to kind of take another look at the budget and see exactly you know, how you're going to make ends meet going forward. Yeah. And as part of that, I mean, when you think about the accounts that are set up, so most of the time there may be joint accounts. Mm -hmm. So part of that budget step, would that be rethinking if you should change the account altogether? Because I know last week we kind of talked about by contacting the right people, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you don't have finances or right. auto drafts coming out. So is it best to close down the joint account and just start fresh? Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, a lot of the joint accounts kind of have a baked in beneficiary in them mm. in that if one person passes away, the other just retains control of that account. Okay. So it's still important to contact, you know, the bank or contact the financial advisor, let them know that, hey, I'm the only person listed on this account now because my mm -hmm. spouse passed away. Um, but typically you're able to still retain that account, which is a really nice benefit of that. Okay, okay awesome. Yeah, and then so the final step. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the final step, and we've talked about it before, is really contacting a, a financial advisor mm -hmm. and chatting with them about it. Mm -hmm. Because typically a financial advisor can help with you know those other two steps we talked about yes. and those other buckets that we talked about in previous weeks. You know, in terms of gathering documents, a good financial advisor is going to have those on hand for you. Mm -hmm. When it comes to contacting the right people, like the Social Security office, they can mm -hmm. certainly help you with that too. And when it comes to updating beneficiaries or setting a budget, a good holistic or comprehensive financial advisor is going to have the scenario kind of baked into the plan. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even though it's a difficult situation, they'll be able to help advise on, on how to move forward. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Caleb, for those awesome steps and just preparing us for what we need to know. And if you are interested in a complimentary consultation from Foster Financial, you can contact them today and we'll be right back. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial.